them and, and, and just kind of do their own thing. But a lot more librarians are, are coming to me now and saying, what is going on? You know, why is Harvard? Harvard had a 21% reduction in 2009, and a lot of the departments were already stressed. You know, people are doing the jobs of, uh, some of the staff members are doing the jobs of two and three workers. I mean, that's not multitasking, that's quad tasking. You know, what is going on? So, for me to be here, to lend my voice to this whole movement, says that I think Harvard can do better. You know, with great power and money comes great responsibility. And part of that responsibility is to look after the least among us, you know? And usually the people that pay the greatest price are the people that are the least paid at the bottom of the ladder. Not the Board of Overseers or Drew Faust with her patronizing emails telling us to just get along and go along with the program. Everything will work out in the end. I'm sorry to tell you, Drew, we don't believe that. And the strange thing is, this goes beyond just Harvard, you know? This, this speaks to the future of where we want this institution to go. You know, are we, should we stand aside and be constantly marginalized and constantly be told, oh, the richest university in the world, uh, it doesn't have enough money this year, they lost up too much money in, in, you know, during the, uh, the down economy, and even in the last layoff that they had in 2009, you know, se several months after it was completed, a member came out saying, oh, by the way, we were surprised to, to see that our, our endowment appreciated by a billion dollars. <laughs> wow, the timing was amazing. <laughs> well, why didn't you tell us this before the layoff or during the layoff, you know? They, they basically had this thing of as little transparency as possible. Uh, and we, we, we have to stand up and say, enough is enough, you know? That's what we're here to do today. You know, we, we like to hold Harvard accountable, you know, because it's, it's a great institution, you know? It's a great place to be, but some of the, some of the members here, specifically the Board of Overseers, and the people who run this place, just don't get it. They just don't get it. You know? I mean, how many roles, how many demonstrations do we have to be? Do we have to do? How many speak outs? You know? How, many, how much flyering? How many marches or rallies? You know? How many professors have to speak out before they listen up? You know? So, it's a matter of us keeping up the pressure not letting up, keeping the dialogue, dialogue going. You know, like the Occupy movement says, you know, we've occupied, we've marched, we've spoken up, you know, and Harvard still doesn't get it. You know, we're brushed aside as just nuisance, you know. And it's not going to work that way. An institution like this cannot move forward unless it acknowledges all of its members, all of its workers, because the workers here are the people that make this institution great. Right. Am I right about that? Yeah. The workers here, let me say that again, the workers here are the people that make this institution great. You know? And we should not allow ourselves to be treated like trash, to be discarded at any time that is convenient for Harvard. You know? Ethically, it's not right. Morally, it's not right. Anywhere you look at it, it's not right. You know? So let us continue to press on, you know, and stay strong. In my department, for example, I work in operations. We've been calling to several meetings for them to try to tell us, um, we just want to make sure you're getting the right information instead of getting it from out there and being misled and, and misinformed. You know, that's their way of like a preemptive strike. 
to try to sort of brainwash us so that we don't think for ourselves. You know? But I don't buy it, and I'm sure you all don't buy it. You know? So, in closing, I'd like to say, let's, let's press on, let's continue our fight. Let's, I'm sorry, my voice is... <clears throat> let's continue to speak out as much as we can and stand together because as long as we stand together, we have a chance. But if we don't stand together, then this fight is, is just, they're gonna win this fight, you know? It's, we're not just here to make noise, we're here to make a difference. So let's continue this uh, dialogue, let's continue to press on, and always, always stand together. Thank you. What a great speech. Big hand for Mika, everybody. They say cut back. They say cut back. They say cut back. That's right. All right, I'd like to bring up one of the many students uh, who's been so kind uh, as to as to support us over and over again. And this is somebody that I see in the libraries on a daily basis. Give it up for Anna Grant from the Student Labor Action Movement. <laughs> All right, Anna. How's this? Yeah. I, I really don't like speaking, um, but I think this is I think this is uh, really important. So I just have a, a few words, um, like as a, as an undergrad uh, that I'll share. So, um, <clears throat> so it seems like there are a lot of things at stake in this uh, transition process, as it's been uh, as it's been termed. Um, while we're all being bombarded with these uh, cheery invocations of like the, the library of the 21st century, it, nobody seems to be really willing to speak frankly about what that actually means um, for the library as a functional institution and also important, more importantly for the people that make it work. Um, as a frequent patron of the library system, every day I gain more respect for and appreciation of the work that uh, and, and care and expertise that library employees imply to their jobs, um, uh, many of which could simply not be performed by automated systems. We know that a library is not just a bunch of books in a building, but this is what it could become if enough streamlining and uh, outsourced standardization, one-size-fits-all, efficiency-maximizing measures are, are put in place. So but that's all. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. Library workers under attack. What do we do? Fight back. Clerical workers under attack. What do we do? Low wage workers under attack. Now, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? That's right. Okay, from the Harvard Union of Clerical and Technical Workers. Give it up for Mary Hopkins, everybody! Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming out. It's freezing, right? We don't care. I work for the Harvard Libraries. I work at 625, which is Central Tech Services. Uh, we are shared services, which means we are going to be the focus of cut of the cutbacks this time. Um, I'm also an alum. I started using the Harvard Libraries. Professor Womack wouldn't say, but I'll say I started using the libraries in 1973. And there are people who worked there for me back then who are my colleagues now. I've seen a lot of change. When I was a kid, there were no window screens in Widener. Pigeons could fly into the reading room. <laughs> And our homeless neighbors were also welcome to come in and read the newspapers. So there's been a huge amount of change, some of it good, some I'm not so much in agreement with. I've worked here for 20 years. We get retrained all the time. 
I can remember when the Library of Congress catalog was one cabinet this wide. Now it's all a widener. We all get retrained constantly. We're not allergic to change. We are also not, on the whole, opposed to dropping what is cumbersome and not necessary. We've seen a lot of that. And it's OK. There are a whole bunch of things I don't miss doing. I don't miss the days when we had to truck a book back and forth across the foyer of Widener 10 times before it was ready to go on the shelf. But what we don't want to let go of is having the library useful to the scholars that we are here to serve. And we are going way too far in that direction, in my opinion. Right now, the staff is in a state of confusion. We are bleeding talent because they will not tell us how many of us they plan to keep, how they plan to organize us, whether our jobs will be here or not. And we've been in this holding pattern since the 19th of January. I'm watching people, my fellow workers, some of whom I've known for like 10 years, who are smart, ambitious. Many of them are still doing assistance jobs because they and they've gotten their library degrees, but the structure is so rigid and inefficient that they cannot move into places to use their training doing things that need to be done. We've got work stacked up undone. We've got people leaving in despair because we don't they don't know if they have a way of working here anymore. It's not good. And I am dealing on a weekly basis that with books that come to me with one detail I'm supposed to fix. And I look at the book and it's cataloged as being about the wrong country. It's cataloged as being in the wrong language. It's cataloged as being fiction when it isn't fiction. These are the standards that they're trying to impose on your library. Do you like that? No! We don't either. Let's hang together and try and turn this thing around. Because the library is the heart of the university. Whether it's books on paper, whether it's microfilm, remember that? Whether it's electronic resources, we're in the middle of it. And we want to go on making this a great university. Please let us. Thanks.